Behind me is one of the most incredibly challenging projects we have built. Why? It is built on a steep slope. Today I will share five challenges that we faced. We encountered during construction on a slope. Construction on a slope begins with site preparation for building. Of course, if there are trees on your property line, you will have to cut them down. And that is already a challenge because you can't drive the equipment in. You will need to cut them by hand, then pull the trees to a flatter surface, and only then grind them into mulch on the surface where the equipment will go. So, this is an additional effort of time, money, and your workers. After clearing the land, you need to determine exactly where the position of the house will be. If you have a straight lot, you may not even need to hire a professional surveying company to place stakes and define the precise boundaries of your house, because you can do this relative to the property line. In this case, it is extremely difficult to very accurately determine the angles of the house without a survey company. Once the marking is done, you need to carefully and meticulously perform excavation or thoroughly leveling of the site or additional soil excavation. And if it is a slope, you will likely encounter such massive rocks that will need to be removed with an excavator. Excavation takes a considerable amount of time and money. For example, we spent approximately $20,000 on excavation for this house. For approximately three weeks, we removed these boulders, leveled the site, and cut into the rock to begin building the foundation and the retaining wall. After dealing with the rocks and leveling the site, you need to move on to the construction of the foundation. This is the second challenge you will face. The first thing I encountered was that it was very difficult to find a contractor willing to build on a slope. Let's say you find an excavator operator who can handle the excavation of the land and will rent an excavator. There are quite a few people like that and they are not afraid to do it. But if you want to build a foundation with a significant difference in height between the first and second floors of 10 to 12 feet, you will have a very hard time finding a contractor. Not everyone understands how to do this. Not everyone wants to take on such a complex project. And as a rule, if a professional is hired to do it, they charge quite a lot of money for it. Guys, I looked at the statistics of our channel and 80% of you are watching our videos without subscribing. We are trying hard, we are making videos, and we are building unique houses. Subscribe! It will support us and give us the motivation to create even more videos. Why does the contractor charge more for this complex work the foundation begins with the installation of formwork. To set up the formwork, for example, on flat ground, you place small stakes a few feet high, stretch strings, and you can almost see the shape of your foundation. Next, the forms are installed. If you are building on a slope, you need to construct large angular structures, so-called barabo, as the locals in the area call them, which can reach up to approximately 15 feet in height and more. It is essentially a structure that is constructed primarily out of wood, and it closely resembles what one would typically recognize as a traditional house. It is very difficult, very expensive, requires a lot of materials, and a lot of time is spent, but without it, you will not be able to determine the property line of your house, the height of your house, and the dimensions of your house as designed by the designer. Every contractor who comes to do their part of the work on the foundation on a slope, such as a plumber or an electrician, will definitely 100% provide you with a higher estimate because the work is definitely more complicated. So, you have found a contractor and started the work. After the forms are set up and ready, it is necessary to install the rebar. But here you will need to work with a structural engineer who, of course, understanding that he is creating a project on a slope, will create special drawings and select the type of reinforcement and the type of concrete that you need to pour into this foundation. 
So, forms are set, rebar is assembled, conduits are laid, plumbing is done, and grounding is completed. All necessary electrical wires are run inside the foundation. You have inspection and proceed to the pouring. If the wall is of a considerable size, over four feet, you cannot pour it all at once. You will have to pour it in stages. Here is a specific example of how much easier it is to build on flat ground and how difficult it is to build on a slope because you face such challenges. I want to take a moment to discuss the permits you obtain for such complex foundations, especially for the retaining wall. In some counties or cities, a special permit is required if you are excavating more than four feet in height or more. Keep this in mind when purchasing land or designing. Check with the county or the city to see if you need a special permit for this because such a situation may arise. It can happen. You will create a project, apply for a permit, and they will not approve the excavation in that location for some reasons. I want to draw your attention to the fact that you will never have to build a high retaining wall on flat ground and obtain additional permits, and it will be very difficult to find contractors who can do this. There are a lot of black pipes around me. You see them, right? These are commonly used drainage pipes, there is an option called French drainage, also known as French drains. It is a pipe with holes that allows water to enter and then releases it out through the lower part of the pipe. There is simply a pipe that has no holes. It is usually placed on downspouts. Why am I bringing this up? Because when you build on a slope and for example, one of the walls of your foundation is in contact with the ground, you need to ensure proper drainage for water runoff. How is this done? You definitely need to do waterproofing on the foundation, on this wall, on one side. Second, you need to install several pipes at different levels. For example, the lower part of the foundation, the middle and the upper. These pipes are filled with backfill. It is better to fill them with gravel because gravel allows water to pass through and collects water. If you simply bury the pipes with soil, the holes in the pipes will get clogged and water will not pass through. The next challenge is the field we are standing on. We are preparing the field for the septic system. The septic system and septic field cannot be on a slope greater than 30%. At least these are typically the rules in our Travis County. To do this on the slope, you will either have to build a retaining wall with a slope of no more than 30% or level it in some way or another or perhaps using backfill to achieve this angle because if the slope exceeds 30% the inspector will not approve it and it will be impossible to build a septic field. It may happen that you buy a property on a cliff or on a slope but there may not be enough space to build the house of your dreams with a septic system. If you have sewage, definitely forget about it. You won't have any problems. We have a video on the channel about the construction of septic systems, but keep in mind that building on a slope or a cliff will be much more complicated than you can even actually imagine. One of the unexpected challenges for me was that on the slope, you will see a lot of exposed concrete walls that are concrete. For example, take a look at this strip of wall and concrete walls. This is an open concrete wall. On the side, if you look at the house, there will be an open concrete triangle that will need to be covered with something, either additional plaster or some panels. But these are additional costs, an extra challenge in the work that you will definitely face if your house is on a slope. And the most important thing that concerns everyone is the cost of time and money. If a house on a flat lot of 5,000 square feet will cost around $100,000 for the foundation, then on a slope you will pay $300,000. If you spend two months on the foundation on a flat site, then on a slope you will likely spend four, five months. This increases costs, complicates matters, and adds to your troubles. There are also advantages to building on a slope. 
Here they are, indeed obvious. This is the view that opens up from the house that you will be building. Undoubtedly, the one who chooses a boat on the slope does so in order to enjoy a stunning view 